morning, good morning, good morning. Yesterday, I was talking about the socialist America that is coming. And I had some people who was like, socialism ain't that bad. Socialism is the antithesis of the core of American society. But we're heading there. We're heading there rapidly toward a socialist country. Now, we're not going to be like the next socialist empire anytime soon. That's not going to happen. But what is happening, like this notion, we got, you know, because I saw some stuff in the comments like people don't want to work really hard for these um, crappy jobs, okay? Um, here's the thing. And this is something that is true for everyone living in America. You have an opportunity to change your station in life. You have the ability to do more. You have the ability to live a different life. You have the ability, you have the opportunity. I grew up the product of a single mother who had three kids by three different men. Not the best environment, not the seat of power. A lot of dysfunction, a lot of craziness, and I got to where I got to in America. But he here's the thing, and this, this, is, this, this is the hard part. You gotta work. When I was in the storage auction business, I often worked seven days a week. 10, 12, 16 hours a day, whatever was required. And I did that for a long time. This is where we run into problems. Uh, when I changed the direction of this channel, I knew that I was gonna lose a lot of people because I'm talking about, you gotta do the work. You gotta do the work. And many people do not want to do the work. They don't want to do the work. They want some little scam. They want some little hack because they want to, because America, American greatness, um, being exceptional in America has nothing to do with comfort. And this is what a lot of people are looking for. They're looking for comfort. They're looking for the easy way. Like, I got people in the comment sections talking about, hey, get on that crypto train, that's easy money. Now, I have an issue with easy money, and I'm gonna tell you what my issue is with easy money. Because I've been studying this for a long, long time. How you make money is how you become accustomed to making money and is how you become addicted to making money. This is why, and this is a story, I, I, I forget uh, football players, ex-football players, and ex-rappers have turned to crime because they got addicted to that lifestyle. And when the lifestyle said, hey, you can't play football no more, people ain't buying your albums no more, and they descended down to being a normal person, they could not change bearings. Like a lot of people who are making money with crypto, who got addicted with the crypto money, when the crypto drops or the crypto gets banned, they're gonna be in the world of hurt. So you got to be careful, like I call it the stripper syndrome. There was a girl on the Social Proof podcast. Um, I can't think of her name, but she was a stripper. And she said that she stripped for 10 years because she couldn't do anything else that make that kind of money. 
and only when she got into something that could make that kind of money did she stop stripping. There's a lesson there. There is a lesson there. Because essentially, you know, I have people, because essentially, I'm trying to teach you guys how to have a better life. I'm trying to teach you guys how to live the life that you want. However, there's a price that has to be paid. There's a price that has to be paid. And a lot of you <clears throat> are not listening to me. A lot of you, because you got on crypto or you found out something, new, it's like, hey, Glendon, this is what you should do. I actually had someone arguing with someone who has bought into the philosophy about crypto. It's like, well, he's missing millions. He should be doing this. I am not interested in easy money because it's a trap. It is a trap. I know it is a trap. And many of you are going to get caught up in these traps and you're going to be living in a world of hurt. But we're moving toward it because uh, I had to take an Uber because, you know, um, one of the new vehicles that I acquired had a radiator leak and it's like 2100 bucks to get that fixed. So that sucks. So I had to take an Uber from the dealership from the uh, car repair place. It was $32. That's normally a $12 ride. Right now, there is opportunity for people to make money. There's opportunity. And people, because they don't like the opportunity, are choosing to ignore the opportunity. And this is where the socialist agenda comes into play. I talked about this last year in the live streams. I talked about this. I was like, when you give people money, more money than they normally were making to do nothing, they become addicted to that. Luxuries once tasted become necessities. These people are addicted to that money. They're like, whoa, 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 I like this. I like sitting at home getting a check. I like the fact that my landlord cannot evict me even though I haven't paid rent. I like the fact that my mortgage company is not going to foreclose on me because the government said they can't do it. I like the fact that the repo man ain't coming to take my car even though I haven't paid my car payment in three, four, five, six months because they have canceled the repo man. I like getting this government check. We're going to create a, a segment of society that will not be fit to work. That's what's going on right now. We're creating a segment of society that will not be fit to work. I mean, if you go back to maybe your mother or your grandmother and when granddad died, Grandma was in the world of hurt. She didn't know how to exist because granddad was doing everything. She didn't know how to pay bills because granddad paid the bills. She didn't know how to pay taxes. She didn't know how to manage credit. And because this woman was an elderly woman, she needed help because she could not take care of herself. And this is what we're creating right now, except there are not elderly women that have been married 40, 50 years. These are young men and women who are being indoctrinated in the socialist agenda and they're becoming unfit to work. That is crazy. But that's what's going on right now. That's what's going on right now. 
we're creating a class of people who are unfit to work. Now, let's go ahead and kind of go back to this because I had some of you guys challenge me on this when I was in that stage of my life where I was working a bunch of crappy jobs, okay? I was, you know, I remember I was coming out of labor ready, the labor pool, and I would go on these jobs, right? And I remember I got this one job and it was what was considered a good job because it was inside, it was clean, and you had access to a bathroom. That was considered a top tier job in the labor pool world, labor ready. And I went in and even though these were crappy jobs, they were crappy. I did them to the best of my ability. And I remember uh, there's one job I went in and I figured out a system and the people were so impressed. They kept me. They said, you're doing three times the work this other guy did in one day. We're going to keep you. We're going to make a position for you because I like the way that you work. And this is something that many of you miss. You might be working a crappy job and you're thinking, I am not going to give my best for this crappy job. Nope. I'm going to wait until I get a better job to show out, to put my foot down. No, you're not. See, here's the thing. And this is something I knew early on in life. Habit is powerful. So I was in the habit of performing at a high level, even with a crappy job. And so when I got to better jobs, my habit enabled me to shine. Many of you have bad habits. You're thinking that you're going to get this better job and you're going to show out put your foot in it. No, you're not. You're going to be a yard bird because you're used to being a yard bird. You're not going to do, you're going to not, you're going to not, you're not going to be exceptional because you have not created the habit of excellence. Every little job I got, I worked my ass off because I knew in the future that good habit was going to serve me well. It's going to serve me well. And many of you are like, well, this is just some BS job. I'm just going to show up and do the minimum. Interesting segue to that. You know the commercial, the general, where you get to pay the minimums, get the general insurance to save some time and money. I called up the general because I was listening to those commercials. I had those commercials in my head, right? And the general insurance company wanted to charge me $213 for liability insurance. Not full coverage, liability. And I was like, thank you, but no. Then I went to the lizard, the gecko, $35. Because my, my primary vehicles are insured with State Farm. And that is $130 a month full coverage for the Porsche and the BMW. 35 bucks with the Gecko. Interesting. So, you know, just putting that out there. The General ain't cheap. <laughs> the General is not cheap. The commercials will lead you to believe they're cheap, but they're not cheap. Because I was like, what the hell is this? But going back into work, we're creating a new social class that doesn't know how to work. I want you to think about that. When I was a kid, finding a job was easy. You could work, you know, one of the most coveted jobs was to be a grocery store boy and bag groceries because you you got to work in the grocery store 
you got tips. It was, it was a coveted job. And also, when I was a kid, all you saw working in fast food were young people. You did not see any elderly people working fast food. You did not see any of that. And as a society, we keep making these social shifts. And this new social shift is not good for society. It's not good for the people who are caught up in the social shift. It's not good because I estimate, because right now, let me go ahead and give you the demographics. 10% of society, no, I think it's 15% of society who from a intellectual standpoint, and this isn't to be insulting, it's just state facts, because of their lack of intellectual rigor and their low IQs, we don't have jobs for them. 15% of society, we don't have jobs for. There's nothing they can do. All right. And that's at all times. These are the people special needs. These are the autistic people. These are, you know, you ever went to school with a guy? He was a nice guy, but he just wasn't that bright. I'm talking about that, that guy. We just, uh, they can be our janitors, housekeepers and stuff like that. But that's about as far as they can go from an intellectual standpoint. Now, this is where we already have that group of people, 10, 15%. Now we're about to add another 20 to 25% of people to that basket. And it isn't because they're intellectually disabled. They're, they don't have fine working skills. They don't have communication skills. They don't have uh, work ethic. I mean, this is why so many people on YouTube have followings. Because like, you know, when I was doing the men's channel, I'm like, what, what, what did I tell you guys to do? If you see a girl less attractive, go up and start talking to her in public. If you were to do that two to three times a week, your dating life would transform. But no, you don't want to do that. And it's all about skill sets. And we're, we're going to, because essentially what this social socialist agenda shift is going to do is going to destroy whatever skill sets that some people have. Right now, I got a friend who's working from home and she is struggling. She don't know how to work from home. Working from home, believe it or not, is a skill set. And a lot of people during this pandemic, they got exposed. They didn't know how to work from home. They didn't know how to set up their schedule without someone saying, hey, do this, do this and do this. They did not know how to regulate themselves. And you got several rounds of layoffs. You had the first set of layoffs that were due to the pandemic. And then you had the second set of layoffs due to the pandemic and the third set of layoffs due to the pandemic. But once we got deep in the pandemic, the pandemic exposed Shelly. Shelly was making 200 K a year, right? But Jill and Bill were making 50 and they were outperforming Shelly. And they were like, wait a minute, if we go out and get another Jill and we get another Bill, we, we could get way more work out of that 200K than we can just giving it to Jill. So the other sub sub sequential layoffs were because corporate America had figured some stuff out. We don't need the Jills making 200K and not performing. We don't need her. So bye, Jill. Bye, Felicia. Hello, Bill. And this is another thing. Right now, we have a bunch of low skill, low wage workers who are refusing to go to work because 
they're living in this artificial bubble. The repo man got canceled. The foreclosure man got canceled. The eviction man in many cities has been canceled. And you're getting a government check on top of it. And you're getting enhanced unemployment. So you can easily get by because you don't have to pay any bills. This is what's going on right now. And that lower strata, 20, 25% is about to join the 10 to 15% that's all, we, we don't have jobs for these folks. We've got a bunch of people in society who have nothing to do. They just wake up, eat, consume oxygen, and chill and hang out. This is their um, situation. And we're about to have 30, 40% of the country that is going to be living in that situation. 30% of the country, 30, 30, 30, 35% of the country is going to be living in the lower, lower economic strata. Some of them, because that's the only thing that they intellectually they, they can do. And then we're going to have another group of people who are perfectly fine from an intellectual standpoint, but they don't have skills. They don't have work ethic. So we're creating also right now at, at no time in history. Well, I think at the turn of the a turn of the century, when it was normal for adult children to be at home until they got married because it made no sense for them to move out. Right now, we have more adults living with their parents than since that time. And here's the thing, they don't wanna leave. I could not wait to get out my mama's house. I could not wait. You know what happened to me? I graduated high school in 1985. I graduated May 28th. June 5th, I was at Fort Dix. You know, because a lot of people wanted to just take the summer off. I'm like, I'm out of here. I'm out. I was at Fort Dix, marching, doing push-ups, getting yelled at by drill sergeants in the summer. It was rough. It was rough. I don't know, uh, but that's how desperate I was to get out of my mother's house. That is how desperate I was ready to move on and begin my adult life. Right now, you have a lot of adults who are living like children. And when you put yourself in the position of a child, you will be treated like a child. You got your mom and dad talking to you as if you're 12 years old. Jimmy, take out the trash. Jimmy, Jimmy, wash the dishes. Jimmy, clean up your room. Jimmy, wash your face. You got some stuff on your face, wash your face. Jimmy is 35 years old. And Jimmy's dad is like 60, talking to Jimmy like that. Remember, once you put yourself in the position of a child, you will be treated as a child. Regardless of your chronological, chronological age, you will be treated as a child. Right? So, we've got a lot of adults who are infantized themselves. I mean, what we're going to see in the next five years is going to be an, a, an evolution of two societies. You're going to have the people out here who want to hustle, who want to build, who want to create. They're going to have extraordinary lifestyles. 
and then we're gonna have about 30%, maybe even 40% of society living in that lower economic strata. And also, humans are humans. Like what recently happened to me, because I had eight cars in the driveway. And uh, I don't know when they found the YouTube channel. Hello neighbors, how are you doing? It's me, the brown guy. Um, and when they found out that I made more money than they did, this is when the BS started. I have a feeling that if they had not been wondering how does he stay home all day? How does he, wait a minute, he got a Porsche? How is he dating all these attractive women? What is this going on? And they went to the Google machine and they Googled me and they found out that I was doing much better than they were. Now, the average price in this house, in this neighborhood, is a million dollars. Million, right? Oh, fun fact, the house that sold, it's a brother! So I'm no longer the only brother in the neighborhood. Ha <laughs> ha! That is going to kill some people. I am no longer the only, I met them yesterday. Very nice couple, very nice couple. Um, <laughs> Woo, man. I, I gave them the 411. I said, there's some really nice people here and there's some racist assholes here. So the majority of the people are nice, but there's a few you need to watch out for. And uh, they were talking about where they were living and they were having to deal with similar issues. And he's just like, you know, where I live, I just ignore my neighbors. So I was like, okay, you know how to conduct yourselves. But I mean, in a neighborhood full of million dollar houses and they're seeing someone, cause you know, I post them a paycheck up here on the internet. I posted receipts, I showed car titles. And most of these houses over here are financed. You know, financing on the million dollar house is like four to 5,000 per month, per million. So most of these houses are like in the $1 million mark. I think the one towards the front is like 1.5. And they were like, wait a minute. How is this little brown dude doing so much better than me? I'm going somewhere with this. So people who make enough money to afford a million dollar house are hating on someone who's doing financially better than them. So where am I going with this? They remember that 30, 40% of America that's gonna be suffering economically? They're gonna hate on the people who are doing better than they are. Prime example, folks in my neighborhood. Folks in my neighborhood are hating on me because I'm doing better than they are. Better, I guarantee you, because look, look like uh, I told a couple, like uh, it's a brother married to a white woman. And I said, you're gonna be fine. Because when I moved in here, my ex-girlfriend was living with me and I did not have any of these issues. And I am willing to bet if my ex-girlfriend was still here, that, that shit would have never jumped off. It would have never jumped off. Because when you are married, a committed man in a relationship, you're seen as safe. And for some reason, um, I don't know, I don't know. But that lower strata is going to hate on the people who are doing well. I saw some of it in the comments. Like um, this one dude was talking about it was set up for like, once again, the system, here, here's the thing. The system is designed if you show excellence, you will rise. Uh, I saw comments that the system is trying to keep the common man down. 
okay, if that was 100% true, how did I get where I got? If the system, I used to be the common man. I used to be the common man. I used to be a product of a single parent house. Well, still am, still the product of a single family house, single parent household. So if the man is trying to keep the common man down, how did I escape? It ain't true. Here's the thing. There is so much opportunity for you right now. But once again, going back to the socialist agenda, people don't want to work. On Clubhouse, I was having this conversation. There is a certain segment of America that is lazy. They don't want to work looking for the easiest path, the least path of resistance to make some money. This is what they're looking for. And I'm here to tell you, and this is why I'm very transparent with my uh, life, my story, that you can rise in America. I don't care if you're black. I don't care if you're Asian. And that, that's kind of funny, this Asian hate. Who hating on Asians? You know, back in Archie Bunker days, Google it, Archie Bunker, um, and during the World War II when they put the Asian people in internment camps, Asians were not seen in the best of light. And you know what these Asians did? They went to work. They built businesses. They got educated. The average Asian has higher education, higher income limit, income levels, and higher business ownership. You think the fact that Asians were able to turn it around was a mistake? It just didn't happen, it was intentional. They were like, Jews, Jews learned that lesson. We're gonna become their doctors. We're gonna become their lawyers. You may not like us, but you're gonna need us. So, black, Asian, oh, Hispanics? Hispanics are coming up. You know why? Hispanics ain't afraid to work. Work like a Mexican. They're not afraid to work. You would get a guy who would immigrate from Mexico and within five years, he would have a 250 dually, a house and a wife and three kids. Five years, whereas an indigenous American who's been here his whole life won't even have that. People are trying to cheat the system. Like, you know, because this whole notion that the powers that be are trying to keep the common man down. You know what keeps the common man down? Common thinking. Remember what I told you about when you do a job, do a crappy job and do it to the best of your ability? At that juncture, at that inflection point, is where this starts to fall apart. Because uh, essentially, if you are not going to do a good job on a crappy job, you're not gonna do a good job on a better job. Because it's habit. It is habit. And this is the thing that is going to mess up a lot of people. This is the thing that is going to create this social divide. Because everyone is looking at Instagram, looking at YouTube, and they're looking at people doing well. And I'm gonna have a few conversations with a few YouTubers that I feel have intentionally misguided people. One of them is coming on, on my, you know, because I, I, once I get my thoughts together, we're going to have a conversation. We're going to have a conversation. Um, there are many YouTubers, and I'm going to just keep it a buck. They don't give a damn about you. They just want you to watch their videos. And this is why 
A lot of the YouTube advice is what it is. It is not designed to help you. It's not designed to elevate you. They're going to lie to you. They're going to lie to you. And, you know, I made a video on Savage Finance that just because I just saw some stuff and I'm just like, look, look, bro, they ain't the truth. And we're going to have a conversation about this because one of the things that I want you to do, you, my people, I want you to be qualified. Now, what does that mean? Well, that's I want you to be qualified. When I walked in that Porsche dealership, I was dressed kind of like this. I was treated with the utmost respect. They sat me down. I wanted to test drive the vehicle. They brought it around. They showed me nothing but high level of respect in class. You want to know why? Because they knew when I walked through that door, I was qualified to be there. That's how I was treated. And I want you to be treated because you're qualified. Uh, there's a lot of stuff talking about you could get into real estate, you can get into business, and you could not be qualified. That type of conversation irks me because it is easier to do the work and to become qualified than it is to keep faking the funk. So when I, you know, I could have financed that Porsche. It would have been like two twenty one hundred bucks a month. I was like, now nah, I'm gonna pay cash. I'm gonna pay cash. I want you to be qualified. I want you to have money in the bank. I want you to be able to live the life that you want to live. And it's gonna take work. It's gonna take effort. It's going to take time. It's going to take um, a different mindset. It's going to take a different level of thinking. It's going to take a different application. It's going to take a different way of looking at things. But I feel that you can become qualified if you have truthful and accurate information to operate on like I said I'm a youtuber I've been a youtuber for 12 years and I know a lot of youtubers don't give a shit about you if they did they would not make the content that they make I try to make helpful accurate and functional content which requires work which requires like this whole thing about you're going to start a business and quit your job. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're going to start a business. You're going to keep your job for three to five years. Then once the business gets to a certain level, then you're going to quit your job. I'll tell you that I've been saying that for 12 years and I have so many people who want to appeal to the lower instincts of people like right now. The knowledge is that investors make more money than uh, business owners. Other day, I saw this, I screenshotted it because I'm gonna talk about this video. Um, once again, fire movement, okay. If you're not in the top 10% of America, you can't even do fire. You don't have the income to do fire. And in the comments, there was this one woman, me and my husband, we retire early, we have a net worth of $3 million. And then it went downhill from there. She said that she had some stock market investments that were paying her $21,400 per week, which is $85,000 per month, which is a million a year. I'm like, there are no stock investments where you can have a $3 million original investment that you're gonna make a million dollars. No, I, I'm just outright lies, just outright lies. And then it was like, here's my investor, contact my, my financial planner. And I'm like, and you will see all of these lies that are designed to trigger and to speak to your lower instincts. 
And what I'm trying to do is educate you because, all right, I'm gonna keep it the buck. Um, someone made a video talking about how to afford a supercar on $48,000 a year. And we're gonna have that conversation. Here's the thing. Even if you have an 850 credit score and you make $50,000 a year, and you're trying to buy a $200,000 to $250,000 supercar, you know what they're gonna tell you? Not no, but hell no. They're not even gonna pull your credit once they see your income, because they know that you, you cannot afford that car. And I mean, this individual made this video and I'm just like, that, that's complete BS. That's complete BS. You know? So we're gonna have a conversation because essentially many YouTubers are putting out information that the financially unsophisticated believe because they don't know any better. Like right now, do some research on how to finance a supercar. And the people who are honest are gonna tell you you're gonna need a large down payment and they're gonna to wanna to see that you financed that kind of car before. Your first supercar, you're gonna to have to put down a huge down payment for them to even look at you. And you're gonna to have to have the corresponding income for them to even look at you. And I'm like, because so many people are financially illiterate, this is why these outright lies at time, outright lies, half-truths, and misinformation abound on the internet because people don't know any better. See, I know better. When I see a video and someone's like, I like the girl with the video talking about fire, she never mentions her income. They keep leaving this stuff out because essentially, right now, the internet has people who are making $50,000 a year believing that they can do fire. This woman said, you know, they, they had a target of 1.9 million and wanted to do it in eight years. And I'm like, you're gonna have to put away $150,000 per year to get to 1.9 million in eight years. Just do the math. 1.9, eight years. Actually, you're gonna have to put away more than that to get to fire in eight years. Essentially, I'm always crunching numbers, doing math, and I'm just like, and I'm gonna start leaving comments on this because people are gassed up. Right now, you got people out here thinking they can afford a supercar on $50,000 a year. No, you can't. You got people out here thinking they can do fire on $50,000 a year. No, you can't. And a lot of these YouTubers are not breaking it down and saying, look, I did fire because I made $300,000 a year. I lived on 80, I paid my taxes, and I invested 120 to 150,000. That's the reason I was able to do fire. They're not breaking it down like that. They're making it seem like you can do it too. And it's bullshit. You can't do it because you don't make enough money. And th this is, it, it irks me because as someone who is financially astute, who can look at, you know, this is a, this is a superpower. When I was in the storage auction business, I was so good with retail that I could walk in the store and with a great deal of accuracy predict when they would go out of business after being in the store 20 minutes. That's how good I was with retail. I knew my shit. And I'm starting to do this because essentially uh, a new series of videos are gonna come up on Savage Finance because people need to be properly educated. I'm not doing YouTube to fool you. I'm not doing YouTube to gas you up with BS. I'm doing YouTube to help you. And what's gonna help you is telling you the truth. That's what's gonna help you. 
if you know that, hey, me and my wife, we could be financially free. We're 21, 22. We both have jobs. We make 25,000 a year piece. We make 50,000. And you come to my channel, I'm gonna tell you how to change that, how to turn it around. First thing you do is start a small business, okay? And you keep your jobs. And since you're so young, you put off having children for about four or five years. You're 21, you, you got time. So you take these four or five years, you start a small business, and your, your income target is 375 per week, which is average person can do that, which is $1,500 per month. Your first year, you make 18,000. Your second year, you make 25,000. Your third year, you make 40,000. Your fourth year, you make 80,000 because you're, you're, you're skilled, you know your business. And your fifth year, you make 100,000. And you still have your jobs. So now, because you have a business that's making 100K, you can say, hey, I'm gonna quit my job and it's not gonna hurt you. You wanna know why? Because you've been listening to Savage Finance, you've gotten rid of the car notes, you've gotten rid of the debt, and you, you're just operating on cash flow. So now, you can, your wife can get pregnant and have little crumb snatchers, and then you can live a good life. And then you can do fire. Because you got your hundred thousand dollars of your business, you got your twenty-five thousand, you're doing one twenty-five, you're investing like three thousand dollars a month, you're a big dog investor. But see, these folks are leaving out like this one video where the dude talked about the UPS executive who had a fortune over because you know I put this video on Savage Fund, that's when we'll talk about it. He wasn't an average person. 14,000 was like making 130,000. And he was putting more money into UPS stock than the average person made in America at the time. This is not normal or easy or the standard. And essentially, the stock market marketing department is working on overtime because that whole thing was felonious. It was felonious. And this is the stuff, and this YouTuber did this video, and he purposely misled people. Purposely misled people to push his agenda. To push his agenda. Because there are, and someone left this comment the other day uh, from a trader. He said, there's probably a thousand people in the world who can turn $500 into 100,000. You know there's 7.5 billion people? So those thousand people don't even represent a full percentage point. They're exceptional. And you know, I'm getting ready to start going after some people because they're just lying. They're just straight up lying because the average person doesn't know. They doesn't know. So we're gonna be talking about some stuff. All right, that's all I got for you guys today. If you wanna enroll in the art of holding, links below, the price did not go up. And um, we're gonna get into some realistic training. I'm gonna give you the real numbers. Uh, someone left a comment about the Land Rover and all the information. I didn't know, like I said, I know nothing about the car business I know nothing about the car rental business, but I'm gonna figure it out and I'm gonna let you guys know here on YouTube. So with that, we'll see you guys in the next one.